This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Full Sail University. Chris sent us a question asking, there's been a series of burglaries down my street and it's gotten everyone a bit shaken up. Immediately my thoughts turned to protecting my gadgets and personal data. Uh, thus far, I've bought some Kensington security locks and I've gotten myself on crash plan. Are there any further things I can do to protect my gadgets? Do you have any recommendations for setting up in-room surveillance? Kind regards, signed Chris in the London, UK. That's, that's, that's protect me gadgets. Protect me gadgets. <laughs> protect me gadgets. <laughs> Everyone, you gotta save your stuff. Yeah. And, and assuming, I'm just assuming now that the thieves in the UK work the same way they do here in the States. Basically, they wanna get in, grab the small, expensive, fensible objects and get the heck out. Uh, that makes the laptops, phones, iPods, digital cameras almost as attractive as a pile of cash and jewelry. Uh, backing up your data offsite with crash plans is a great start because it's a lot harder to replace than, say, the hardware that it's stored on. The machine requires a good password. Any machine, any computer in your home should have a good password on mm -hmm. it. You do have those set up, right? Because there's nothing worse than giving a thief yeah. a totally usable laptop or your phone. Uh, oh, it was just unlocked and ready to go. Isn't that nice? It has all the latest updates, too. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I would encrypt the drive, too, but I am paranoid. I would put surveillance cameras a distant, like, 43rd uh, compared to hardening your house. In the town I live in, break-ins usually involve kicking or jimmying open the back door during work hours. Um, and it's it's really funny. Consumer Reports, uh, I don't know if you've, if you've heard of it in the UK, but um, they have a really good article on uh, keeping your home safe. Kick-proofing your door is the best idea. Good door locks are an excellent start, uh, but usually the deadbolt lock gets kicked through the door jam, the strike plate, right? So you have a big door. Oh, yeah. And let's see, I, th I think I have a good picture here. Ah, here's a classic picture, right? So this is the striker plate right here. It's often held on with two small one-inch thick brass screws. You walk up, you kick the door, and basically the deadbolt tears through the inside of the door frame, which is usually like a half inch of wood, and boom. They're, they're into your house. So what you want to start out with is a really good lock. SecuritySnobs.com, uh, Deviant Alam, who's a lock expert in the, in the hacker universe, uh, turned me on to this website. Like Abloy Protex, if you have the money, this is the lock of choice. Uh, if you don't have the money <laughs> you know, to do like $1,200 worth of locks because you have like six doors to do, um, uh, I found out from them, uh, turns out actually, um, a quick set smart key, uh, which is available in the US, is a reasonably priced substitute. It's bump proof, uh, it's very solidly designed, oh, it's nice. gonna be hard, because a lot of locks actually are really easy to just hammer off the door. People are probably like, oh, that's ridiculous, no one would do that, but it happens all the time. And if I see another YouTube video of a, of a, of a young child <laughs> opening a door with no effort whatsoever. Right. <laughs> You know, securing your, securing your door can be really basic stuff. Um, totally. Basically, there's a what they call a door reinforcer, which is this thing we're looking at right here. There's, there's two parts you want to strengthen. You want to strengthen the deadbolt inside of the door frame, and you use uh, some sort of steel device like that that wraps around. It may not be the most, oh my goodness. Oops. There we go. There it is. <laughs> I'm not going to move my mouth. <laughs> Don't touch anything. But that wraps around and that basically strengthens the door, the, the lock inside the door. And then, of course, you have those striker plates, uh, security striker plates, which, you know, what you basically want, it's kind of crazy, um, what they call a reinforced metal box strike. So it's a big, long piece of steel that goes in the door frame with like three to four inch plus, like three inch plus screws that secure the heavy duty striker into the framing. Makes sense. And the longer the striker is and the more staggered the screw holes on it, the stronger that connection is gonna be. Um, that security, uh, that uh, Consumer Reports article also talks about security film for windows, improved window locks, lighting, alarms are a good idea too. Um, Whatever the easiest way into your house is probably the way they're gonna go. So if you have a not window. Not entirely true. Really? If, okay. you have a, if you leave your windows unlocked, yeah, they're gonna oh, be a definitely. and in through the window. That's something like breaking. So that's it a good turns, thing to mention. It turns, in a lot film. of, in a a lot of studies here in the U.S., they would much rather kick open a door and walk out than break a window, possibly cut themselves, uh. leave blood behind, and then have to crawl back out through that window. Talk to your local police department. Talk to the Metropolitan Police and see what they recommend. Find out how people are breaking into houses or maybe how they're choosing them. Security cameras, you know, so a That's fuzzy nice. 320 by 240 picture of a person. I think there's other things you should probably be doing first. Yes. Uh, the Kensington locks you mentioned are a nice deterrent but a decent set of wire cutters will shred that cable in a heartbeat. Yeah. You could buy a safe and put your gear in there, but is it is it is it big enough to, or is it bolted to the floor? Yeah, Things I mean, like that. See, those are Kensington locks. Those are Kensington locks. Lock. So, they're not bad. 
you can crack one open with a cheap pair of wire cutters, right? Yeah. A, a proper pair of cable cutters, like uh, my beloved uh, Klein Tools High Leverage cable cutters, will smoke, like a $25 hey, a tool will smoke through <laughs> like a dozen of those cables uh, yeah. before you start to wear out the blade. Do you have homeowner or renter's insurance? I think that's the most important thing of all. There's a chance you may not get any of your stuff back ever. So if you don't have it insured, you're definitely not getting anything back at that point. If you do have it insured, at least you can then file the claims, get your stuff, if, if yeah. that's what's and most And then they'll important. hit your house a second time, which happened to Molly Wood over at CNET. Oh, so her house was broken into in Oakland, and then six months later after the insurance, she replaced everything, they broke into the house again. Um, make sure your insurance actually covers your stuff. Here in the States, you usually need riders or special coverage to pay for jewelry, computers, uh, guns. Uh, over, they'll, they'll reinforce you like, you know, $1,000 towards jewelry. But if you have like $25,000 worth of jewelry, um, it's crazy. A friend of mine just lost like $20,000 of electronics and jewelry, a $4,000 watch, a $7,000 ring, all of their iPods, all of their phones, all of their laptops, all of their hard drives. And what was crazy is the burglars had already scoped the uh, the condominium below theirs. They carefully cut the glass on the neighbor's door. They oh, unlocked yeah. it because the idiots basically left a deadbolt you could reach from the glass window in the front, no disrespect. Uh, and, and, and after they basically quietly and carefully went through this downstairs apartment to grab a bunch of expensive computers, they kicked open the door, ran to the upstairs place, and just ransacked it for anything they could find. And they made a pretty good haul. No. And also, it, it, it can't be just insurance alone. You also have to write down things like serial numbers and model numbers of your most important gear. Because usually what that insurance claim is going to be based yeah. on is, is the file you created with the local police department. So if you didn't tell the police that all your stuff got stolen and you can't be very specific about what was stolen, you're going to have a very difficult time trying to do any kind of recovery on this. Yeah. And, and it is just stuff, but still. I want to uh, say I'm almost positive Lifehacker did a really good job on an article on inventorying oh, cool. your house. But basically you want to inventory your house to know it can be stolen, to make sure it's insured properly, and of course to go through your house and have sort of a security audit done you know, hardening the exterior, having good practices. You know, if people can see into your house because you live on a ground floor apartment, don't uh, leave a bunch of expensive stuff uh, in the front room where they can stare at it through the window sense. every day. A little bit. A little bit. Good luck. We hope you don't get broken into. Right now, though, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. And don't forget, back up, people. Back up right now. The mobile app industry is on fire right now, and with Full Sail University's online mobile development bachelor's degree program, you can learn the skill set you need to take advantage of those emerging opportunities. You'll explore advanced programming languages, visual frameworks, usability principles, and app deployment for iOS and Android operating systems. And you'll learn both the programming and the business side of mobile development so that you can conceive, develop, deploy, and market an application from start to finish. Through Full Sail's Project Launchbox program, students receive a MacBook Pro preloaded with industry software plus iOS and Android devices. Courses are delivered through Full Sail's immersive online education platform, which maximizes the capabilities of the Mac, giving you a learning experience unlike any other. And between the App Store and Google's Play Store, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded with no signs of slowing down. So if you're ready to master the technology of software to compete in this rapidly growing industry, visit fullsale.edu slash techzilla to learn more about this online degree program.